Hello everyone, thanks for coming to class today. Um, today I'm going to review your soft slab project. You've had this demo before, there's nothing new, but I know it's been a while, so I want to go ahead and review it for those of you who are still trying to complete your soft slab project at home. So you need a cylinder, and it can be any size. You're just going to make it whatever size you need for the piece that you want to make. Um, so I chose my refillable water bottle. And I went ahead and I rolled out my slab and I textured it. Don't forget, go and look at my video, How to Roll Your Slab at Home. And um, I went ahead and measured it out. Um, in order to find out what length I needed, I wrapped my cutoff wire around it, measured it on my slab, and then added a couple extra inches. For the height, you're going to make it whatever height you need. So this is what I decided to do. You're going to turn it over gently. Remember using your little baby bunny hands. We don't want a bunch of finger dents in here. And then you're going to gently roll it onto your cylinder. Okay, once you have it on here, you're just going to go over it, make sure everything is fitting right, it's not slumping at the bottom. Once you're happy with that, you're going to go ahead and you're going to cut through both layers at the same time. So you're going to hold your pin tool at about a 45 degree angle. Um, beveling this edge makes it a wider edge so you get more surface to surface contact. You're going to remove the excess from both ends. Okay, gently so we don't get any finger dents. This is very wet clay. We don't need to score it. Just a little bit of slip. And then we're going to just marry those pieces back together and they're going to fit beautifully because we cut through them simultaneously. And I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm not going to get too carried away. Um, I don't mind a little bit of a seam showing. You could clean yours up more or you could leave a very obvious seam if you were doing something really industrial looking. Anyway, that'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my container and then gently give it a little bit of a twist. Remove the paper. Don't forget to put newspaper around your container. I'm going to go ahead and take a brush with a little bit of slip and I'm going to run it down the inside of that seam while supporting it with my left hand. And I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to get rid of these teapots for a minute. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to let that set up for a little bit. It's very soft. Meanwhile, I'm going to talk to you about some of the different options you have. Um, we did three different bottoms to these cylinders. We did just a straight up flat bottom, we did a four corner bottom, and we did a three corner bottom. And I'm gonna start with the um, four cornered, and with that, we marked our four cardinal directions. And I took a little triangular slice out, and then I used that slice, and I just centered it up in the remaining areas and first I marked it just to make sure you know I'm just kind of winging this I didn't do a lot of measuring so I just want to mark it first and make sure nothing is obviously off and once I've done that I can go ahead and cut it Okay, and I can throw some slip on all of those edges. You shouldn't have to score it. This should still be pretty soft when you're doing this. And I can go ahead and fold those down into a four-cornered bottom. And this is going to square off your cylinder. Just do this, and then I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to give it a little tap. And that kind of pillows it out a little bit so you get this squared look, but it's kind of pillowy and round, kind of like a dumpling even. And then I'm going to use my slip and my brush, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to do all those seams on the inside too and make sure they're nice and secure. So that's how we did a four-cornered bottom. For the three-cornered bottom, we marked three spots, and then I just laid my pin tool on here really quick just to double check them close enough. Now with this one we're not going to cut, we're just going to fold. So I'm going to throw my slip on now and where I mark these three spots I'm going to take and pinch those three spots down towards the center till they meet. 
I'm gonna give them a good pinch in the middle there and then pinch out. And that will form my legs. Now I let this set up a little bit before I do it. Um, so I can turn mine over, but you may not want to turn yours over right away because if these are really soft and you turn them over like I did with this one, those points will flatten out. So if they're really soft, let them sit for a minute. But as soon as you can turn them over, do so. And now you're going to go in with your slip and you're going to use a healthy amount of slip and you're going to force slip down into these three points because you've got these hollow points down here. And if you're going to use this for food contact at all, you don't want these hollow little pockets to fill up with coffee, with cream and sugar in it or anything like that where you're not going to be able to get in there and clean them out. So I use a healthy amount, a dollop, a slip in each corner to kind of fill them in. And then the rest of it will fill in with glaze and you should end up with a very nice product that should be perfectly suitable for food contact. Okay, if they're really deep, I sometimes will put in a little bit of slip, let it set up, and then go back and put a little bit in later. So that is your three-cornered bottom. I'll turn these upside down here for just a minute so you can take a look at them. Now my um, cylinder has had a little bit of time to set up, and so I'm going to go ahead and put a bottom on this one. And for this one, I'm just going to do a flat bottom. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. Um, if, I, if you have a little bit of scraps left over from when you rolled out your um, first slab, that would be awesome because you could just use that to make your bottom. I did not save anything from my slab. It was a pretty small slab when I rolled it out. So I'm just going to roll out a second little slab very quickly. So I can go ahead and add a bottom onto this. Doesn't, I'm not going to put any new texture on this because it's just going to be the bottom. Um, I will use that as a reminder to tell you that don't forget on um, your soft slab and your hard slab project, they are supposed to be textured. So look around your house. What do you have that you can make a texture with? Look in your garage, in your bathroom. Do you have jewelry or fabric or baskets or tools or what could you possibly make a texture with? So you do want to go in. Today I textured these with seashells that I had sitting around. So there's an idea for you. Okay, so very simple when we're doing these flat bottoms. We're just gonna set it on here. We're gonna go ahead and just mark that very lightly to begin with. Um, if you cut it right away and then you take it off to slip it, it is really difficult to get it right back in that exact spot. So what I do is I cut it a little bit oversized just so I have a little bit of room to play when I go to place it back on. And I'm going to run some nice gooey slip along here. Now I've got, like I said, I've got a little bit of room to play. Get it on there and then I'm going to just give it a little bit of a tap. Um, and then you have a choice. You can clean all of this off and make it nice and smooth. And when, especially when it starts to set up soft leather, almost hard leather, you can go in with your sure form or your drywall sandpaper and clean that up. You could leave a little bit on here. If you're doing something that's really kind of organic and maybe you press some plants or something into there and you're thinking, oh, you know, I want to do something a little bit different with this foot. Sometimes I'll do a foot where I leave a little bit on there and then I'll roll that. And I'll roll it up. And then just roll that up onto my cylinder. And that's just a different looking foot. Press that down a little bit. Clean it up a little bit. And I'll leave that there. And uh, it's just kind of a chunkier foot if you're doing something, like I said, a little more organic. Or you can clean it up. It's up to you. It all depends on the look you're going for. So there's your basic cylinder form with a tri-foot base, a four-footed base, and my regular flat base. And look for my other videos where I'm going to cover handles, spouts, and lids.